Is that a spyglass that you have there? Did you take it from a fallen soldier? No, this one here is my own. I bought it near here, days before I enlisted. Can you look into the faces of the men on the other side? Does it give you an advantage over them? I once observed two wounded prisoners. They embraced at the moment. They discovered that the other was still alive. They may have cried. I couldn't see the tears. Now when I see men through this thing in my hand, it's strange, but I feel responsible to them. He left his wife and farm to go to war. On the battlefield, he experienced more than he could ever understand. He remembered a young soldier, half crazed, yelling, they're all dead. He wanted to say no one died, not one was lost, to get the soldier to shut up. But the words couldn't come out of his mouth. He couldn't lie even to a half crazed man. It wouldn't have changed anything anyway. When he left the army to return to his farm, three years had passed. He kept no gun from the war and had none of his own. He did take a muscular horse that he rode in the final days of the war. When he arrived at his farm, he didn't see the house. He found a stone cross marker nearby that marked his wife's grave. She had died while he was gone. He could see that another family took over in a newly built home further down. From a distance, they looked like a simple family. He had no reason to disturb them. He would find out later in town if any money was being kept for him or was due from him. He rode into town where he expected no one to remember him. The talk in town was about a child kidnapped by the Indians. There was a raid and the child was taken. He understood that another raid against the Indians preceded it. Due to the cold, snowy weather in the hills, any military campaign would have to wait until spring. But there was a lot of talk and planning that was underway. He decided then and there to go and retrieve the child. He wouldn't need any weapon. The snowy, wintry weather was too much for both sides, but not for his horse. He found out where the parents of the girl lived. He found out where the Indian village most likely would be found. Then he headed into the hills dressed like a cold Indian. When he found the village, he watched for hours before he caught glimpse of the child, at the same time trying to understand the rhythm of life in the village that day, as well as trying to determine where all of the men were and what they were doing. When the time came, he rode his horse into the thick blizzard and went straight for the child, scooped her up, and rode off. He heard cries and hollering and rifles going off. His horse galloped through the high, thick snow and could not be caught by any of the men, either on foot or on horseback. When he was clear of the village and had escaped into the blizzard, he realized he had been hit by two bullets, and it was bad. He drove the horse straight to the child's farm. When he got there, he climbed down with the girl and saw that the snow was too high for him to open the front gate. He tied a rope around the gate post and signaled to the horse to pull. The gate opened enough for the girl to go through. She would have to go the rest of the way by herself. He told her, go and knock on the door, your mother will open it. She grabbed his hand as if she expected him to help her. You have to go the rest of the way yourself. I am not able. As she started, he realized that she didn't want his help. She was offering him hers. He climbed with difficulty back on the horse and watched as the girl clawed through the snow to get to the front door. The snow was high enough that it got in her face and mouth. When she finally reached the front door, she pounded several times. When her mother opened the door, she was in total disbelief, 
and cried out a sound without forming any words. She threw her arms around the child and wept. The child at first kept her arms down and did not return the embrace, but soon the warmth of her mother's embrace and tears brought her to hug her mother firmly. The mother finally asked, Who brought you here? The child replied, The horse brought us. He directed the horse back to his wife's grave. Once there, he got off the horse clumsily a final time and unstrapped the saddle and removed the reins from the animal. He hit the backside of the horse to free him to go wherever he would. Then he took a few steps and fell on his knees next to his wife's marker, grabbing the stone cross at its center to brace himself up, while turning in his report to God, his wife, and the crazed soldier. No one died, not one is lost. Folks found his body when the weather started to thaw out. They found no weapon on his body. They did find a small monocular for viewing out to a distance. They figured out that he was the husband of the woman buried there and that he had rescued the little girl. The spring campaign never happened. Is that a spyglass that you have there? Did you take it from a fallen soldier? No, this one here is my own. I bought it near here, days before I enlisted. Can you look into the faces of the men on the other side? Does it give you an advantage over them? I once observed two wounded prisoners. They embraced at the moment. They discovered that the other was still alive. They may have cried. I couldn't see the tears. Now when I see men through this thing in my hand, it's strange, but I feel responsible to them.